Hey there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of 3B TV. I am Brian. This is 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. And on this episode of 3B TV, I wanted to share with you my thoughts on the successes and, well, failures of our meat bird setup this year. So as you know, this is the first time that we've done meat birds here on 3B Farm and Homestead. Uh, in the past, we've used our standard breed chickens uh, after a year of laying as our meat birds. But this year, we wanted to try something a little bit different, and we ended up using the Cornish Cross. And by and large, very, very happy with the taste and, uh, and so forth of the, the Cornish Cross birds. And in fact, uh, very much considering offering up some um, Cornish cross birds for for people to buy uh, as I raise them out this fall. So overall, I was very happy with the, we'll call it an experiment, and um, looking forward to doing up another batch of birds in the fall. So if you are interested, let me know. We also do have a few uh, birds available from this crop that we're willing to uh, sell if you're interested in trying it out. So if so, uh, ping me here on uh, YouTube or if you are... Um, if you've liked our Facebook page, um, go ahead and you can uh, message me through through Facebook. So uh, or or whatever. You may have my email address. You may have my phone number. Whatever it works. But get in touch with me, and uh, we'll be glad to let you know what the cost will be in the fall. And uh, if you want to buy one now, we'll be glad to uh, hook you up. Uh, this is not meant to be an infomercial for our chicken. Uh, this is meant to be kind of my thoughts with regards to how things went with the setup. So um, this uh, setup here in the woods, I was a little bit worried uh, because of predators. Um, that was really my biggest concern, my biggest worry about doing things um, out here kind of on the edge of the woods. Now, quite frankly, we're not that far out in the woods because right there behind me, that red building right there, is our chicken coop and there's our house right there. And uh, I'm standing actually in the middle of our driveway. So this is a fairly heavily trafficked area, um, but at night they are out here uh, a little bit of a distance from the house. And so I was a little bit worried about that. A couple of years ago, I actually tried raising out my pullets uh, down over the hill in the woods, um, down that way there, um, beyond where that's the pig pen right there, was down over the hill from that. That was a little bit farther away than this set up here, but we suffered a lot of loss that year to Predator. Uh, now, one of the things we didn't have, we didn't have the electric poultry netting from um, Premier One. And uh, I also didn't have uh, electric around the uh, coop itself. We were actually using uh, the hoop coop that you see there that we're now using for the pigs. We actually used that and it was the only protection that we had. And I'm not sure, it didn't seem like they dug under. I'm not sure quite, quite sure how they got in, but we lost a lot of birds that year. So I was very worried about nighttime predators um, with this setup. We did not lose a bird to nighttime predators. Um, so I was very, very happy with that. And overall, I attribute that to this Premier One poultry netting. And then we'll kind of go on in here if I can get over this without, uh, we'll kind of go on in here if I can get over this net without falling on my butt. But uh, the other thing that we did as well is um, I actually ran a hot wire around the base of the coop uh, or the tractor here so that is uh, a hot wire that runs all the way around the tractor and uh, so uh, using this piece of wire right here we would just hook it to the fence right here and uh, that would electrify the um, the base of the tractor so those are the things that worked out really really well for us um, overall very happy with uh, the poultry netting in combination with that hot wire around there worked out well. By and large, I was very happy with the design of this chicken tractor. Um, it worked out very well. It was the perfect size for the number of birds that we had. Um, I don't know if I would want to put more birds in there if I was going to keep them as contained as we did. Um, and that was one of the things that didn't work out well 
and uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, by and large, very happy with the design of this tractor, and uh, the flexibility of it is such that I'm going to be able to take this, uh, I'll remove the hot wire around the bottom of it, I'll take off that front gate, and I'm actually going to use it as a shelter for my um, baby pigs when I start to wean them. So this is going to serve uh, another purpose for me. And then once the pigs are weaned and I've reunited everybody back into one big happy family, um, this will then be the uh, chicken tractor for my me birds in the fall. And I'll put the hot wire back around the base of it. So going to get two uh, uses out of this. And uh, so very, very happy with that. Now, uh, what didn't work well? Um, well, like I said, um, I had to keep them cooped up in this uh, a lot more than I wanted to. The initial plan was for me to basically have that ch chicken tractor stay kind of static. I would refresh um, the wood shavings in it periodically. And during the day, the chickens would have all of this area here to kind of free range. Well, uh, that didn't end up working um, as I expected because we did have a visit from a hawk. And uh, so I ended up losing one bird to a hawk. And so from then on, during the day when I was at work, we would keep them pretty much in the tractor the bulk of the time. And then at night, we would let them out to free range. Well, as you can tell from this area here, there's not a lot of area for us to move that tractor. And so unfortunately, we did have a lot of problem with manure buildup in that tractor um, because I really hadn't anticipated um, having to keep them in one place as long as I did cooped up as much as they were. Um, and so that was a downside. We did move the ch chicken tractor, I think, uh, one, two, three, four, uh, maybe five times uh, while they were out here. But um, that obviously, it, it wasn't enough. And um, so that was a downside. Uh, what I ended up doing, though, as you can see right there, uh, I've got a scarecrow here. So I use that. And the other thing that I'm going to do as well for next time is I'm going to try getting a guard goose and uh, see if that will help with the aerial predators um, because this is not an area where I can put a cover over top of it. It's just not, it's not designed for that. I don't want to go through that trouble. Um, and so it's either try a guard goose and allow them to free range during the day or have to move this chicken tractor around all the time, which I really, really don't want to do. Um, and I, you know, and it's just because this area is so uneven and, um, there's just not a lot of it that, uh, that, that's what I'm trying to avoid. But if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. And if I do more than 25 meat birds, then I'm going to have to come up with a second tractor and then maybe a different area and then maybe a different strategy. And, uh, we'll just cross that bridge when we get there. But that was definitely a downside was having that chicken tractor stay too long in one area. Um, I didn't like that. And then the aerial predators. So we're going to try to fix that with two things. Like I said, a guard goose in use with the uh, scarecrow. And, and then um, again, uh, allowing them out to free range more and uh, replenishing shavings or wood chips or something like that uh, a little bit more. But overall, very happy with this. Um, definitely, it's uh, going to get uh, a thumbs up from me. And um, we are going to be doing meat birds again, if nothing else, for ourselves. But we would like to, uh, to do them and offer them for sale as well. And we'll see how much of that uh, we're able to, uh, to do. If I get too big, if I get um, where I'm going to have to do a lot of, or I, I want to do a lot more meat birds, obviously this area is a little bit small. I'm going to have to cut down not cut down trees, but cut down some brush so I can string my um, my fence uh, through the trees a little bit better to give them more area. And uh, then I'm going to need the guard goose or guard geese, depending. Um, and then the other thing as well is, it, you know, if I get a much above 50 birds, then at that point, I'm not going to process them myself anymore. I'll take them somewhere and have them processed because there's just no way I'd be able to do that many birds at one time. Um, it's just not set up for that. And that's fine. Um, I think I can definitely build that into the cost of doing it. And I think we'll still be able to, to be okay. But um, anyhow, these are my rambling thoughts. That before I took down this fence and put it away, uh, I just wanted to share that with you and kind of give you, um, 
You know, I, I think sometimes what happens on YouTube is people are very excited to share kind of an idea and then they try it, but they don't always follow up, or at least that's what I found. They don't always follow up with whether or not something was successful or something wasn't. And well, obviously you're not going to necessarily uh, replicate my setup because I'm sure your land uh, usage is different. Um, your your setup is, is going to be far different than mine. Um, I just wanted to share that or my thoughts on my setup with you so that hopefully you can glean something from it and, um, you know, you get a feel for, you know, what went right and what went wrong for me so that you can apply it to your situation. So until next time, everybody, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of 3B TV. If you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe, and uh, until next time, we'll catch you later.